Now I will show you how to desolder a component from the PCB. First, when you're doing desoldering, generally you need to set the temperature on the soldering iron to be a little bit higher, and sometimes a lot higher than when you use it to solder. It depends on what kind of solder is used on the PCB. Lead-based solder requires lower temperature than non-lead-based solder, for example. This kind of alloy that is 97% tin, 2% silver, and the rest few percentage copper, it requires higher temperature to desolder. So leave your soldering iron on for a few minutes to allow it reach the temperature that you set it before using it to desolder. Otherwise, you will waste a lot of time and frustration trying to figure out why the solder is not melting, it doesn't go on the wick. Anyway, so first I will show you the professional way of doing it, which is using a desoldering wick. And this is a multi-core 2.5 millimeter wide desoldering wick, which has flux built inside to help you remove the solder more easily. Now, with this, what I need to do is I need to press it firmly against the part which I'm trying to desolder. So I'm trying to desolder this capacitor that we just mounted here. And the, there are these two leads. So I need to use the desoldering wick. I need to apply it. directly onto the part that I'm going to melt and using a large surface, not a tip like this, because there's not enough heat transfer. And try not to hold onto the wick by your hands because the heat transfer will make them very hot and might burn your hands. So just try to use the solder, soldering iron itself and try to apply it with a larger surface at instead of just the tip, so do it more at an inclined angle and apply it. And you can see the um, solders flowing through the wick. See, now that's clear of solder. It's a pretty quick way of doing it. Of course, I'm holding the board vertically so I can get a better camera angle. In practice, you would want to do it like this, so there's a firmer ground to press onto. Now, I will do the other leg by pressing the soldering iron onto the wick. And there, look, the two legs are now free. And sometimes there might be a little bit residue on the hole, keeping the leg in place but generally that's not a problem. So that's desoldered and we can just remove it by hand pretty much. Look, that's pretty easy using the desoldering wick. If, make sure you get it if you're going to work with any electronics because it will make your life a lot easier. Now, what happens if you don't have a desoldering wick or that you can't find one within a short time and you need to desolder something? Well, a common tool that is found in many electrical and electronics store is a desoldering pump. Basically, it sucks the solder with the pumping action and it's not the best tool to use, especially on smaller components, because there are simply not enough solder to suck. But on larger components, such as the bigger capacitors and the diodes, you can put enough solder around it to make the action actually work. So what I usually do is I would take the soldering gun or soldering iron and 
apply some solder, for example, if I'm going to desolder this film capacitor here, the yellow one, I identify the two holes here, right? And what I will do now is I will apply some extra solder on the existing solder joint to make it easier. So here you can see that. So I make it kind of big, bigger than necessary. And once I have it in place, I will load the pump and aim the pump at the solder while I'm melting it because it's quite a delicate action. I have to be both quick and precise. So now it's better if I put it down like this. So you can see that I have to melt the solder and then quickly quickly push this soldering pump on top of it and then release and some solder will come out from the tip just clean it and as you can see there is almost no solder remaining on this leg so that's uh, that's a success and I have to do the same thing for the other one and the other one is here it's this one so I have to melt it while keeping it melted I will put this desoldering gun on top of it and very quickly press down Look, it's almost completely free of solder, but there is still a little bit remaining. So that's why I say the soldering pump is not exactly the best choice. So what you can do is, if you can, at this point, generally what I would do is I would just pull out the capacitor, the component, whatever it is, because if there's just a little bit of solder remaining, you can heat up the solder so that at least you get one leg free. So see that leg is free now and you can free the other leg. Okay, so that's another way of removing a component by using the desoldering pump. And again, it's not the most elegant way, but it works when nothing else is, is available. This next method is the least professional method of all for desoldering. But sometimes it works when you have nothing else available and you need to desolder something right away with only a soldering iron. So what I will do here is I will identify the component, which is this electrolytic capacitor, and I will use the soldering iron tip to melt the existing solder while pulling down the component with either my hand or like this twi twizzer. So what I will do here is I will have the soldering gun on top of the solder and make it loose and try
modify the push the component down and then I will try with the other part of the by pulling it away. As you can see, the capacitor is moving away. And then I'll repeat it. And see, now the capacitor is removed without any solder on the leg. However, in order to re-solder something, I need to remove this remaining solder on the pads. And this is where the Q-tip where the cut and swap comes in handy. Basically, what you need to do is just to heat the, the solder when it's in liquid state, brush it off, either onto the soldering gun itself or off the circuit board. So here is the other one. You can just push it, push it, and push it. So then you clean the soldering iron and just repeat this process. And it's a very messy way of doing it, but I've done it, you know, one time when I had no other tools available. So Because the southern iron also acts as a surface which the solder can attach to. So already we have one hole that's freed up and uh, now I can try it with the other one. And if you need to open up this hole, you can also use something like the lead from a capacitor to pop open this while it's melted. So here you can see. So you can just hold on to the board and try to push push through when you're resoldering the component back onto the board. So that is the method which is the least professional and the least ideal. Again, when in a pinch, it will do. At least you are aware of this. But by all means, get the desoldering wick by any means possible and make sure your room, your workspace is well circulated with fresh air, the windows are open. If you have a fan, keep the fan running because the fume from the solder and the flux are toxic to human body and in long term, they could damage your health. So always work in a well ventilated place and be safe, enjoy it.